If you follow me on Twitter or have seen the earlier episode about Chris Somney's work on Black Widow, you'll know I'm a huge fan of the work Chris has brought to every issue of that series. This week begins the newest set of Creators Edition episodes, where I was lucky enough to get Chris on the show to talk through some of his process in creating the Black Widow comic. You're watching Strip Panel Naked, I'm Hass, and with Chris Somney this week, we're going to show you some of the cool work going on in the pages of some of the best comics. So Chris, your work on Black Widow and Daredevil with Mark Wade has an interesting note you don't often find in big two superhero comics, in that you're both credited as writers in various forms in practice what does that break down to we sort of toss a few ideas back and forth and then and he'll go back and he'll type it up into a couple of paragraphs we get that approved by marvel and then i take those two paragraphs and all of our nonsense and try and turn that into 20 pages of layouts and then mark does dialogue after all of my layouts have dialogue in them but it's usually pretty rough and full of curse words and I've broken down some of your work on Strip Panel Naked before, and it's clear you're very careful about telling a story as visually as possible, right? You know, there's so many great European books that you can look at and follow the story, even though they're not translated. Yeah. I wanted to be able to make a book that you could read without having to have the the soundtrack on. Like watching a movie with the volume off. You yeah. still know what's, got, what's happening. I wanted to be able to do that in a comic. That was one of my goals with this is just... There's a lot of things like when the lion leaks her secrets. We're trying to figure out a visual way to do that because how are you going to pull that off? Because it could be a TV screen, but that's boring. And we toss it back and forth a half a dozen different ways of how could the secret be leaked visually? Like it's one thing to just like have it scrolling along the bottom of CNN, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to have something visually pop. So uh, Tony Stark was listening to NPR <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. he, he spins his head around, and then you just see him shoot across the ocean. And that was just how, you know, the, a secret was let out. But we don't have to, like, have the, the lion, like, typing it up and sending an email. Because yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's really boring. Let's take a look at this page with Black Widow in this car park, where you end up moving the camera quite a lot. I mean, nearly every panel. Are you just trying to achieve a chaotic effect, or do you kind of just naturally lean towards shifting angles? I'm just trying to make it exciting. And if it's all... If everything is, you know, chest level, then it's just going to look like a sitcom. And it's not it's not exciting. And I want to keep the excitement up in the reader. And if I can keep that the camera moving, it's just like a movie. You know, you keep that camera moving, then you're going to keep the people entertained. And, you know, I don't have shaky cam or anything, so I have to <laughs> I have to keep moving that eye line. So if I can make the make your eye go down and then back up and back down, then if you're flowing all over the page, then that's more exciting than just a backwards S curve through a page is just do ba -do, ba -do, ba -do, ba -do, and then you're done you know there's slanted panels and i really wanted it to to be you know a panic i want you to your eye to move all over the page because this is a stressful moment i mean sure there's let's see one two three four, ten panels mm -hmm. but it should feel like a really quick action scene i mean it would just be you know five seconds in a movie but i want you know i still need all that real estate to to keep you involved but you also start to move us both in and out of the car. Is that just instinct to keep moving us? I think it's just going to have to come naturally. Like some of it, I know like you don't want to have two or three panels inside the car in a row because then you're just going to feel like you're inside the car and it's not as dramatic. Mm -hmm. If you can keep in and out and in and out, then it's frenetic. You know, you're keeping the, the reader on their toes. So if you see what's happening outside, what's going on inside, what's going on outside, keep bouncing back and forth. And then that's that's exciting. The, the, the cuts are what I think makes it jumping you also love sound effects in your work but we did talk about you kind of telling stories entirely visually so how do you see those two working together you would hear it in the movie i feel like you if it's a really loud noise you need to see it um sometimes i'll do a silent gunshot but that's just because it's more exciting to like the flare of the gun you'll you'd already know what that sound is you don't need like a bang <laughs> for for the panel for it to work you know what's happening yeah um and uh i guess if it were a subtitle it'd just say silent <laughs> <At the bottom. laughs> walking dead does that a lot where it'll just go silent when there's a gunshot mm -hmm. and it's just like everything just boo all the way through but with this one you need to the sound effect of her shifting into reverse you need it to know that's what's happening otherwise she's just holding it <laughs> and i really wanted those tires screeching because it's getting pushed in reverse even though she's fighting up against the the land rover here mm -hmm. we need that and then the the that's going diagonally panel five from that screen of her tire we go of her backing up into the the concrete wall that one's just for the eye line that's just to help you get down to the bottom I mean, for the most part i just i just felt like it needed that sound i guess that's instinctual 
and you work in here with Matt Wilson, who coloured a lot of your work before, so I guess there's a close relationship going on between the two of you. How aware are you of what Matt will be bringing to this line work, and how do you work together to create the visual feel of these pages? I really like non-literal colours, like don't make the sky blue don't make grass green that's my my, my biggest thing was don't <laughs> don't go too literal and but that's already what matt does anyway matt colors for emotion and uh and he had the idea that anytime Nat does anything really black widow-ish like even if she's in costume or not when it's really violent it really goes back to her past it's red mm -hmm. like just like stark red and i thought that was brilliant it really gives you a punch every time you know she breaks an arm or something the whole panel just goes boom it's red which makes it seem even more violent and all the flashbacks they're pinks and reds but there's a little bit of a texture in there too and i think it started from me sending scans of pages and there was like a texture to a page there's so much stuff nowadays that just looks so digital and i i didn't want this to feel like it doesn't feel like it's there it just mm. there's, there's there's not substance to it yeah. It all just feels like it's, you know, it's on glass. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't I did, I didn't want it to feel like that. I didn't want it to look like cell shading in animation. Um I wanted something that I mean, I'm trying to go a little grittier with my art. There's a lot of textures in the art. There's, you know, um china marker and different patterns and textures that I'm trying to bring to it. I wanted something like that in the in the colors. Mm -hmm. And he was started scanning pieces of paper. <laughs> and making and there's a layer of paper in <laughs> in every page so now you see like even if you're on your ipad it looks like it's a comic page that you're looking at in a book yeah yeah yeah. and uh and i thought that was brilliant that's that's that was the the final thing that took it on home to to make it the real look of of, of the book um there's just like a vein of <laughs> of uh like a wrinkle on one of the the scans that he sent me i was like that's it <laughs> that's it you did it and on the next episode, we'll talk a little bit more about another book that Wilson and Somni collaborated on, which is Thor the Mighty Avenger, where we'll talk through some of the processes of working with a more rigid script, framing, and trying to build a little bit of character in there as well. That's coming next week on part two of the Chris Somni Creators Edition Strip Panel Naked. We'll see you then. If you're enjoying Strip Panel Naked and would like to help support while getting access to a whole host of extra content, including new articles, page annotations, and reading lists, as well as the monthly comic book club, please check out our Patreon. We'd love your support. You can also find me on Twitter at HassanOE, where I post a bunch of extra comic page breakdowns every week. And finally, hit subscribe to keep up to date with all the Strip Panel Naked episodes. And as always, thanks for watching.